Wait, I'm actually I'm gonna do a shameless react react time with this video. All right, this is the video. This is the it says killed by its own creator, the rise and fall of the first great esport. And this is about StarCraft as a whole, but mostly StarCraft 2. I want I want to I'm I'm curious what people have to say. I a think it's terrible. But Scarlet on the regroup is You're already halfway through. Starcraft God damn it. Birth to I shouldn't have liked it. From literally being launched <laughs> into space to drawing thousands mistake. of rabid fans to arenas, it was a legit esport before the word was even invented. In terms of the sheer number of participants, the coverage, and the money at stake, Starcraft used to be the biggest esport on the planet. But now, it's hard to feel like it really even matters. So what happened? What toppled the king of esports? It's pretty true. Like StarCraft Two was like the beginning of esports, and they were like, we were like to the give best. Give you an for idea of just how huge StarCraft was, especially in the nineties. Thousand people showed up to watch the StarCraft Sky Pro League Finals in two thousand and five. Yeah. That's forty thousand more people than were in the arena. Yeah, big only in Korea, though, but it's still big. Meanwhile, this year StarCraft streams were lucky to even hit because like esports at this point was like, and that's for people watching from too small to be global. But to understand why StarCraft fell, we have to understand what made it so great in the first place. When Brood War came out about a year after StarCraft oh, no. uh, came out, the game became really, really popular in Korea. So popular that even people who didn't play computer games knew about it, and they, they even knew about the best players, who they were, because they were on television so much. Back when gamers were still considered basement-dwelling losers in the West, Pro StarCraft gamers in Korea were revered as gods. I got in a taxi coming from the airport, and there was a poster, and I think it was a boxer advertising something or other, and, you know, I, I think I made some sort of remark, and the taxi driver then proceeded to tell us that he was training to become a professional gamer, and this guy was probably in his 60s, and yet <laughs> here he was, you know, going down to the, uh, the LAN cafe, the PC Bangs, um, every other day after work to practice group ball. And it was only then I suddenly just went, okay, this is kind of crazy shit. This is way bigger than it is in the West. The best of the best were given the title Bone Drop, a title that came from holding <laughs> the love of the people, not just dry statistics and records. And it they say stuff like this, and I'm not really sure what they mean because it was about being like the best. It was a lot about the statistics and records. I don't really know what they mean by that. Like, yeah, people love them, but it's... Okay, 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 it should be working now. Apparently, my drivers are out of date, and that means that it stops my stream, which is uh, pretty aggressive, in my opinion. <laughs> I think a little bit aggressive. <laughs> 223, we left off? Okay, okay, okay. These people are saying not to pause, but they can't hear. They need subs. I don't know what to do. I'm being pulled in a lot of directions right now, guys. I need I need everyone to be really concise. Um, okay, yeah. What I was saying about the Banjoa thing is that like uh, it's true that like people love them, but like it was a lot about stats, and they literally say it wasn't about stats or how much they were or their records. It was because people loved them, which I think is kind of a uh, disingenuous it's about the aura yeah but the aura was like because they won so much right but i mean it's not just about winning but it was like they changed the meta right like they could uh they could stop winning every game the next day but they made an, a profound impact in the meta so you could say that it's more about stats but i just feel like um they came from a really weird angle and they talked about that so yeah, Bone Drop, a title that came from holding the love of the people, not just dry statistics and records. Yeah. And in Korea, StarCraft matches were broadcast on television and eventually spawned entire channels dedicated to broadcasting the game. Korean StarCraft teams were even sponsored by corporate giants like Korea Telecom and South Korea Telecom. So what happened was is these PC bangs sprung up all over Seoul 
and all over Korea, which allowed players to go in and spend free time at very little cost. Yeah, BC was a dragon, right? PCs at yeah, the time, he was a, anyway. That's... And they all came preloaded with Brutal. So suddenly you've got all of these things combining yeah. TV looking for you know new stars, sports people looking for new sports stars, brands looking for young males in particular, but also women to advertise their products. And here comes this yeah, massively just, yeah. popular, free, effectively free <laughs> it's game. It's been a while, man. Play, <laughs> Since we talked about bands. dragons, dude. And so it was a perfect storm. All of these things combined to allow StarCraft and Brood War in particular but, to so yeah, just rise huge. up out of this nowhere. Just, and within a couple everyone of years, knows Brood they massive. had TV stations devoted it went to, so the, great. to the games and to the leagues. By the mid-2000s, StarCraft had a fully built-out esports infrastructure in Korea one that was used as a model for the West. But StarCraft got so big so fast that there was little room for growth. By 2006, StarCraft hadn't been patched in five years, which is insane given how often games get patched these days. As far as the StarCraft community was concerned, the game had been figured out. There were no more new moves to make, no more new strategies to develop. That is, until Jadon showed up. This is super weird. The credit Jadong. It super weird. Anybody who really knows about Boo I don't even know much about Boo but it wasn't Jadong who changed shit. Jadong just did stuff really well. He didn't like change the meta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you think they're gonna talk about so many people, but then they say until Jadong came, it's like what Jadong, dude? Like he Jadong's a great player. And he, uh, everyone knows about him being like the later gen of StarCraft, but like everything was like figured out by the time he came in. It was about like the f any of the bonjois, any of the dragons, any of those people were better. <laughs> you know, it's just super weird. Their brood war bit on this is super strange. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like like everyone was everyone. Uh, did the building blocks for Jadong. Because, um, I mean, even... Because, yeah, he did good do... Poke Bunny points out that he was really great with Mutas. Which is true, but even the technique for Mutas was already figured out. So it's like... You know... He he perfected the groundwork. and Which is a great skill, but you can't say, like, he changed the game. He, he just perfected it to a level that people... You know, we're aware of. But yeah, super weird. Jadong's rivalry with Flash, the greatest StarCraft player of all time, revitalized the game. With these two, you don't need qualifiers. These are actually just the greatest well, yeah. gamers ever. Greatest but players ever. At the end of the day, they were still playing a decade old game. Yeah. The StarCraft community needed something new. Hell, it's up. But they quickly get the f off this. StarCraft II Wings of it's Liberty like about, was a new too. chapter for the game. Like, okay. Slowly but surely, it pushed Brood War out of the competitive arena. And for a few glorious years, StarCraft II was the biggest esport in the world. Classic, classic game. MVP versus Squirtle. The whole series is classic. And unlike Good Brewer, clip. Wings of Liberty was bigger than just South Korea. StarCraft 2 was unstoppable. At least, until Heart of the Swarm happened. This is another weird comment to make. Until Heart of Swarm, you gotta wonder, what about Heart of Swarm was so killer. Heart of the Swarm was StarCraft II's first expansion, and any hype the community had going in was quickly deflated by a pretty severe drop in game balance. Mm. The big problem were Swarm hosts. I... Swarm hosts? Really? Swarm hosts? Like, we had Brewlords for so long. Like, why Swarm hosts? Like, 
okay, yeah, it isn't it isn't wrong, but like we had broodlords, investors killing the game for so long. If we're looking objectively at StarCraft uh, gameplay, right? And they're like, it was so great and wings. What could go wrong? And then Swarm House happened and it off. But, well, we already had problems. What I was thinking he was going to say was like, oh, they just, you know, like everything else people say, like arcades, chat channels and stuff, how like the game felt dead, even though there was so many people playing. People were playing all the time. No one knew. You couldn't, you just had no sense of community. But it's like, Swarm House, it's like, I get kind of what he's saying, but the fact that he says Wings was so great, but then Swarm House, it's like, I don't know, like, Infestors were way more OP than Swarmos. Swarmos were really annoying. It probably felt worse to play versus, but Infe actually, I don't know. Infestors were insane. If you got a full fungal on more Marines, you just couldn't do anything. That was two, two fungals, and he's dead. And it's like, you couldn't move him. It was crazy. So, it gets really weird, right? Like, this weird... Weird stuff onto weird stuff to build this narrative. Zerg only pool that could basically spawn infinite units without the need for gas or mineral. The swarm most, I think, is the worst thing to come to StarCraft 2. And if all that is gibberish to you, all Which, you really have to know it was is pretty bad. Swarm were pretty bad. I, I don't think he has any plan. <laughs> I've, I've lost all comprehension of what he could do from here. There is no answer. I like how it's all really fire kick no Like answer. the one person who forces Swarmos every, every game. Slow the game down like this is the only and person who did this. Them. If it worked, they were gonna win the game. G Fire takes game at number one, and he knew that Wait, for a long time. As did we. Okay, okay, we're good. In the end, patience wins out. <laughs> it's just, it's just fire kick, dude. There was a cool match every once in a while, but most people. Oh, there's a cool match once in a while. Okay. Just wasn't fun to watch anymore. This game is not the most entertaining game we've ever seen. It's all fire cake, dude. It's literally, literally just fire cake, man. Uh, at least for the last hour. Well, turtle players, they players they are going to turtle no matter what. what. Viewers would agree this is how they should play. <laughs> and as StarCraft's popularity began to wane, more and more players began to retire. I am not going to continue as a player. I hate that they put Idra in this. As if he could not play StarCraft anymore because Swarmos existed. Like, this dude hated the game since day one, dude. And they put Idra in there. Oh my god. That's when I was really, that's when I really didn't like this video. Is when they framed Idra as, like, I don't like this game anymore, man. It's just not the same. Swarm Monster are just ruining it. MC, Idra, it's disgusting, man. Um. It's just gotten to the point where competition is not enjoyable for me anymore. Fan favorite Stefano, for example, jumped ship live. <laughs> like the like the guy who always goes Swarmos. He was going Swarmos versus he even he made a Swarmos in this game. It just died, dude. He just made it. Where is that Swarmos? He, there is a Swarmos right there. <laughs> <laughs> He he forged it versus bio. This this dude loves Swarmos, man. Has nothing to do with the unit at all. He loves this unit, man. Ship live on three. The reign of Stefano <laughs> has come to an end. That is an end of a very special. Look, he's so happy. That young man there. He, he got out with like thousands so of times. His StarCraft two career has been the guy. He's been the player. He's made a lot of money playing StarCraft 2. He's not enjoying it as much as he used to. <laughs> By 2015, other games had arisen up to take StarCraft's place in the esports world. Part of the swarm crippled the game. But Blizzard was game. hoping that their next expansion could revive it. Do you think maybe the Legacy of the Void has legs? Do we feel like that's the case? Absolutely. I think the biggest question will be how much and, and for how long. Um, it's always going to be one of those top five games. Over the next few years, Blizzard tried to make the game faster, to bring it more in line with the StarCraft that fast. everyone fell in love with. But their next decision was the final nail. What was the next decision that f***ed everything up? I want to know. Please tell me what they f***ed up. There's only one thing they, they did left that f***ed the game. In 2016, Blizzard region locked StarCraft 2 tournament. They region locked the game. They could have just left it and they would have been fine. But they all up by region locking the game.
how could they have, how could they have done that? How are they? Who even gave them that idea? The region locked the game, man. If they didn't region the region locked this game, man, we'd have such a good scene. We have GSL and we have uh, you know SSL. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe even Pro League. Maybe. Uh, you know who else we'd have? <laughs> no one else. <laughs> Literally no one else. It'd be Korea. But yeah, that's cool. Because then we, we go back to Blue Boy, right? Meant that Korean players could only play with other Korean players in Korea for tournament purposes. It was supposed to introduce some regional diversity mm. in StarCraft's pretty Korean dominated competitive scene. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, MMA, he is back. He is your season three World Championship Series Europe Ugh. champion. What Blizzard didn't anticipate is that it created a sort of vacuum in South Korea. All of the new up and coming South Korean players could now only play against the veterans who've been dominating the game for years. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely unfair, right? On an individual level, uh, Koreans are subjected to a different set of rules. <laughs> this video is uh, a stricter set of rules. Like intuitively, that will just strike a lot of people. There's uh, Joe. Unfair. In general, as oh, the Korean shit. scene has progressed, the lower tier and mid tier players have kind of all dropped out, whereas the top tier players are still playing. Without new blood, the game stagnated. Then, all right. To make it absolutely clear for people who are uh, less informed about why region locking exists, it is true that K Korean scene is essentially dying because of it. But the whole world, except Korea, would have been dying if we didn't region lock. And it was basically like the decision was the lesser of two evils. It's there's there's no really good way of going about it. Someone had to get chopped. And in this case, it was Korea. And honestly, they lasted way longer than everyone else would. There's so many new players. I actually would argue Neve wouldn't even exist if we didn't region lock. Because the reality is, like, when you're a StarCraft player, you have to be, like, top 16 brackets to actually, like, compete in this game. Because you can't just... Um, I mean, unless you got a grandfather that died that has tons of cash and you were in the will because you like taking him to golf, like, there's a, like, what are you going to do? You have to get top 16s at least. So if that's not even like guaranteed from the start, or not even that guaranteed, but like you're feeling pretty good about it, you won't even try. There's so many people like that who would not even try. And you could say that's, you know, bad competitive spirit. You should, you know, always give your best shot and stuff. But the reality is there's so many things we can put our time into day to day that we need a little bit of insurance, which is obviously why the Koreans dropped off. If, you know, if they should have, if everyone should be playing for no money at all, then, uh, you know, say that to the, all the Koreans. <laughs> there's no amateurs for a reason. People need insurance to, uh, I mean, you're already like going all in in life by trying to do pro gaming so it's ridiculous to think that you shouldn't have a little bit of you know optimism going into it sponsors began to drop out moving on to more lucrative games like league of legends dota and csgo later that year pro league dissolved it was the longest yeah korean dying korea dying is really bad korean players are not improving at the same rate as they have this is all true the team house structures have collapsed they have less support in that aspect they're all living on their own essentially and there's a lot less collaboration within the Korean scene as there used to be. The other problem, of course, is that real-time strategy games like StarCraft just aren't that popular anymore. Which is true. They're fast-paced and complicated, and they don't really lend well to a pleasant viewing experience for a newcomer. So I, heard I actually feel like StarCraft has a good place in like the diehard esports section. There's a lot of people who just play League and um, CSGO and stuff, and they just get tilted by teammates, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to play a 1v1 game where people don't fuck with me. And then they start playing Tekken or Melee or StarCraft. And I think uh, I think that's a good spot for uh, StarCraft to be. Just like the hardcore game that's just a cornerstone. Honestly. StarCraft fans stuck it out. And the scene isn't without its bright spots. The game still has a following all over the world. With nostalgia keeping the grandfather of all esports afloat. But there's still that nagging what if. What if StarCraft didn't fail? 
and what, if anything, could bring it back to its former glory. In 2017, Blizzard made StarCraft free to play, and they introduced the War Chest, a uh. crowdfunding initiative that attempted to make the eSport more viable. But Blizzard can't turn back the clock. The fans are dedicated, and the game is still great, but it'll never be as huge as it once was. StarCraft will always be the granddaddy of esports, but its glory days are over. Thanks for watching. If you want more, everyone's here for nostalgia. Also, kind of lame. Like I'm just playing the game, man. I actually just like this game, dude. Uh, but yeah, that was that was the big ones. Was just um, the parts I paused at pretty much. Yeah, it's true. The match fixing scandals were a huge hit on StarCraft, and I don't know how he missed them when he was, uh, who or whoever was looking into this. Because that was just massive, man. <laughs> Alright, so I'm getting a little scared. I'm gonna have to donate a little bit more for me to let those slides, okay? Just letting you know. <laughs> Yo, match fixing was huge. I don't know how they missed that. I don't know how they misrepresented like the history of StarCraft so much and then um, I feel like the only really solid part was the end where they talked about what happened to Korea because they basically just quoted like three different videos and they didn't actually put much input into it but um, yeah like choosing Korea over the rest of the entire world as the move to save StarCraft just does not make sense and, uh, I don't know, man. It's a smear campaign. It kind of feels like it. But it's like, why would you smear campaign StarCraft, man? Crazy. It's a lot more complicated than the video gives the credit for. True. That's a 10-minute video talking about a lot of shit. If I was them, I would have just, like, what do we got, like, Half this video is about Brood War, and it's setting the stage for uh, the rest of the video, but it really doesn't need to. You can just talk super briefly, be like, man, this game was super popular, all this crazy shit, and then let's talk about StarCraft, and just like use those five minutes to actually talk about like match fixing channels or like. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine making a video for normies and not as edgelords. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm just I actually like this channel. I've watched a lot of these guys' videos for like other games and stuff, and I was like, oh man, I really like uh, how they tell stories and stuff. And they tell good stories even in this one, but um, it's just completely wrong. And it makes me wonder what else is wrong that I've been watching this whole time, because you know when you don't know anything about a game and you're watching a video like this you're putting a hundred percent faith that they did their research and that's they did not they um it, it's like it's almost like um what's the game chinese whispers when you're like in a circle and you whisper to someone to your right and then you go all the way around until um it hits back to the original person and it's like completely it's kind of like that like they just heard like someone heard secondhand, someone who knew about StarCraft talking about StarCraft, and they kind of just pieced together the bridge, bridge the gap. Yeah, they didn't ask the right people. You know, they had a lot of like, they had like the names right, and like, there was a, like the units were right, they weren't like <laughs> mispronouncing anything, but it was just, it's all a little bit off. And uh, this, they have a million subs, man. Uh, these guys are gonna get tons of views. It's just, uh, it's a shame. Yeah, why not interview any of the people that were actually there? Yeah, they had like an impromptu, like, I don't know if that was their interview, but they had one with like Gur, I think it was, for the food board section. And then they just didn't have anything at all for the rest, which was kind of weird. But are you turtle, Monroe? Yeah, super strange video. I'm glad to hear, if anyone has any opposing thoughts, I would love to hear 
and talk about it. Because um, there's some people who were talking and they kind of quieted up after I got done ragging on it. Because <laughs> I know some people have different perspectives on what happened. Especially region locking. Super controversial. A lot of people have different opinions. Uh, you know. Safe place. <laughs> 